You want to buy a car? You need credit. You want to buy a house? You need credit. You want to rent a nice apartment? You need credit. You want to start a business? You need a loan? Guess what you need? Credit. You want a good insurance rate? You need credit. I could go on until I'm blue in the face. The fact is, without a good credit score, you ain't going nowhere. But the problem is they didn't teach it to you in high school. So what do you do? You stay tuned to Man of the Free, you listen close, and you let Big Luke show you the way. Let's go. What's up, guys? It's Big Luke here, Man of the Free, freedom of mind, money, and media. And I'm going to tell you what, Ruben, when I came in, oh, Ruben's here, by the way. That's our producer. Very handsome guy. Got a mustache, glasses, headphones. Wish you could see him. He's fun to look at. Uh, but Ruben, when I walked in the studio today, I got excited. I literally saw my backdrop. I saw what I'd created, what we've created. And, and I was very excited because my goal in doing this is to bring value, okay? Um, when I say that, it's a very general term, right? Bring value. What am I giving you, fucking Sunday coupons? No. What I mean is I'm a guy that's got experience. I've been to some very high and some very low points in my life. Luckily, I found some happiness. Um, I found some success. And I believe it's my responsibility as somebody who's got a few nickels to rub together and the gift of gab to try to use the platform of social media and the internet to bring value to you. Now, who are you? You're my fellow man, right? Americans, uh, middle class, people working hard, trying to make a living, trying to figure life out, trying to get it done. You're my people. You are who I'm here for. And I frequently talk about how do I phrase this? The things essentially that high school should have taught us, right? Or school in general. I got a five-year-old son and a 11-year-old stepson, uh, love them both to death. They're the high point of my life, besides my wife. Um, and they come home from school and they talk about what they've learned. And I just, man, without delving into some ridiculous tirade about public schooling, this is shit these guys are never going to use, right? You talk about ABCs, one, two, threes, you know, primary colors, geometry, algebra, basic, you know, uh, science, stuff like that. But guys, you know, I'm a firm believer in every kid doesn't need to have the periodic table memorized, okay? He should know what it is. He or she should know what it is. They should know how it relates to everyday life, but they shouldn't have to test out and remember it because I got to tell you, I, 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 <laughs> I don't recall one time in my adult life where I've had to know that copper was uh, CU. Uh, is that right? Kubrick? Copper? Yeah. Um, <laughs> see what I mean? So the point is this. There's a lot of stuff that gets fed to the children that's not necessary. All right? And I'm not somebody that's going to go off on a tirade about how uh, schools indoctrinate your kids, what they do. Um, but what I am going to tell you is there's a lot of unnecessary information that's crammed into those little skulls. And there's a lot of stuff that they should be learning, things that are effective, things that are going to help them be efficient, things that are going to help them in their everyday life to be productive, uh, tax-paying, successful, healthy individuals. And by God, they're just not getting it, okay? So what are we here to talk about today? We're here to talk about, and we should make a series out of this, Ruben, the things they should have taught me in public school. And I'm talking about credit. Okay. When I graduated high school, I had no idea what a FICO score was. I thought it might've been a, uh, 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 the, the game ending score from some sport in Romania. I didn't know what FICO was. Uh, I didn't know what a credit bureau was. I didn't know uh, I, nothing. I mean, essentially nothing, literally nothing. I knew nothing about it. When I went to my first job as a used car dealer, excuse me, new car dealer, I was hired and, you know, I went out and I got a customer and I brought him in and we went on a test drive and I, you know, qualified them correctly regarding what kind of price range and payments they were looking for, what kind of vehicle. I sat him down. I went to my boss. I said, hey, this guy wants to be at 250 a month. He wants this car. We test drove it. He loves it. Uh, I can make a deal here if I'm 250 a month. And the guy says, okay, do you think you can get him to put $1,000 down? And I'm like, well, yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. So I go out there and I say, hey, sir, great news. A thousand bucks down. You're 250 a month. We got a deal. He says, hell yeah, we got a deal. The guy was ecstatic. In that moment, I thought to myself, I'm the greatest fucking car salesman alive. This is easy. I'm going to get rich. I got the paperwork drawn up. I went into the finance office. I handed it to the finance manager. I said, there you go, man. Whew, you're all set, baby. The new guy just fired one away right out of the gate. Wasn't even on the job an hour. He goes, clickety, click, 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 click. Okay, he's got a co-signer. I said, what, what's that? A co-signer, does he have somebody to co-make the loan? I don't know what you mean. The customer that's offered to purchase a vehicle from our establishment is not credit worthy. He needs somebody else to go on the loan with him that is credit worthy in order to buy this car. This guy could not believe how naive I was to what we were discussing. I could not believe that I, you know, like that this was this important and I'd never heard of it before. 
but the bottom line is I ended up having to go, you know, ditch the customer, move on to the next one. And in that moment, you know, I look back and I can reflect and I can see why car salesmen are so crass towards people with bad credit because the way they're looked at by their finance managers, their sales managers is, you know, that's just a pawn on the chessboard, get rid of it and go after a skilled piece. They, they're, they're not desired. They're a, ugh, get them away. So I'm going to teach you about credit. Okay. Now there's some of you out there who have a good working knowledge of credit, but you don't know the intricacies. There's some of you out there that know plenty and this will be redundant. Turn the channel if you want to, it's fine. What this episode is here for and I say this many times, I'm reaching out to people who were like me when I was younger or even in, in the middle part of their life that just don't have this information. It was never bestowed upon them or to my younger audience who's just not gonna get this information in school. They need somebody to bring this information to them, okay? In an effective and an efficient manner. So let's talk about credit. What is credit, okay? So I gotta tell you this, okay? <laughs> Last night I was working out, getting prepared for this episode, and I do a lot of thinking in my gym. And I was watching videos. I was watching YouTube videos. I was reading some stuff on the internet. And I gotta tell you, everything I read, it felt like I was watching the same exact video spoken. I guess it'd be like this. It'd be watching the 1980s version of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the 1970s version of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the 1960s, 50s, and so on, until we got to the point that they don't have film. It was the same story, the same information regurgitated over and over again in different resolution with different graphics, different B-roll, different lower thirds, different text overlay, and different people. There was nothing fresh. There was nothing organic. These content creators literally went out. They all watched the same goddamn video and just spewed the same information over and over again. So we're not going to do that here, guys. I got a few notes. So if you see me looking down at my phone, that's why. Now, what is credit? Understand this, okay? I try to bring everything to you in a commonsensical way. So imagine you're living your life. Your best friend comes up to you. This is somebody you've known for years. You trust them with your life. They babysit your kids. You let them borrow your car. And they say, hey, man, I'm in a tough spot. I got to fix my car. The service bill is $1,000. I don't have it. I got 200 bucks. Could you spot me $1,000 so I can pay this repair bill, keep the 200 bucks in my pocket, and then if you can give me, let's see, about two months to pay you back, I'll pay you back when my taxes come, and since I get such a substantial windfall from my taxes, I'll pay you back 1300 or maybe even 1500 instead of the $1,000. And you're like, huh. All right, so I got to put this money on the street for two months. I'm going to get it back, and I'm going to make half my money again. I know this guy or gal. I trust them. You know what? Sure, sure. I got it. Yeah, absolutely. I'll do that. That's a realistic, viable scenario, okay? Scenario number two. You're living your life. Person knocks on your door. You answer the door. How you doing? Hey, man, how are you? My name's Steve. I live one county over. You've never met me before, but my car just broke down. I brought it into the shop. They told me it's going to cost a thousand bucks to fix it. I don't have the thousand dollars. I've only got 200 bucks right now, and I need that to get my kids some school clothes. So I'm wondering, would you give me a thousand bucks, okay, so I can pay this service bill and get my car back on the road to do what I got to do? One man to another. I would just really appreciate it. Here's what I'll do for you. In two months, I get my taxes. I get a pretty good amount of taxes, so I got some money to play with. What I'll do is I'll pay you back 1500 bucks on that thousand dollars that you fronted me. You'll be made right. You'll make 500 bucks. I get my car on the road. Life goes back to normal. Everybody's good. What are you going to do? You and I both know what you're going to do. Unless that person got lucky and knocked on the door of Daddy Warbucks, who's got money to burn, they're not getting the money, okay? Why? Well, you say, Luke, common sense. I don't know this person. I don't know their history. I don't know how they pay their bills. I don't know how reliable they are. Matter of fact, they could be lying to me about the fact they don't have the money. They might have it and just be choosing not to spend it. So you know what? My good friend, tell you what. Here's a hundred bucks, go towards the cause, but I'm not letting you borrow anything. Have a nice day. And that's if you're super generous, okay? That's probably what I would do. But 9.95 out of 10 people are gonna tell that guy to go pound salt, okay? Why? For the reasons I just discussed, you don't know this person, no history. You have nothing to go by. There's nothing that guarantees you you're gonna get paid, okay? So if that is common sense and that is logic, 
why you would think a bank behaves any differently is beyond me, okay? I'm in the car business. I get customers that come in, and it's usually the younger crowd. They'll come in, they'll say, hey, I need a car. I like that car. I'd like to buy that car. No problem. Let's go on a test drive. They go on a test drive. They come back in. Yep, I'll take it. Okay, clickety-click. Same thing like with me with my first customer. Listen, man, you got no credit. Uh Uh-huh. Well, how did you plan on paying for the car? Oh, I'm going to make payments. I'm going to get financing. Okay, I understand that's your objective, but you don't have any credit history. No bank is going to give you a loan. I'm sorry. Huh, okay? And it's difficult for me to fathom how those kids' parents didn't teach them the ins and outs of credit, okay? How they did not somewhere pick up that knowledge along the way. But then reality strikes, and you realize that there's a ton of people uh, who are raised in, in homes with only one parent where the other parent's working. There's a ton of people raised by parents who are underprivileged and don't have that information. Furthermore, Some kids just got parents who paid cash for everything. They don't know anything about credit. So there was nobody there to teach it for, teach it to them rather, okay? So what do we have? We have a situation where you need something and you need the credit to get it, okay? Um, This could be an apartment. You gotta have a good credit score nowadays to get an apartment. This could be insurance on your automobile. You gotta have a good credit score to get insurance. Um, You think of anything else, Ruben? Credit cards, loans, you know, borrowing money of any kind. I mean, nowadays, I mean, colleges do background checks and credit checks. Jobs, jobs, jobs are now pulling credit bureaus. So essentially the credit bureau, the credit history is something that shows the entity that you're looking to borrow money or do business with how reliable you are, okay? There are three major credit bureaus. What is a credit bureau? A credit bureau is just a company, okay? It's like an agency that houses data, okay? And what they do, picture it as like a a big silo full of computer servers. One is Experian, one is Equifax, one is TransUnion. These companies specialize in going out into the cyberspace, into the world, and receiving data on you and how you pay your bills, okay? The lowest credit score that you can have is, depending on the bureau, between 3 and 350, okay? 300 and 350. The highest score that you can have, again, depending on the bureau, is between 850 and 900, okay? Okay. I watched those videos. There was people saying that the highest credit score you could get was 800. There was people saying the highest credit score you could get was 1,000. That is false. That is false. Excuse me. That is factually inaccurate. It's just not real. Okay. In the words of Matthew McConaughey and the Wolf of Wall Street, it's Fugazi, it's Fugazi, it's a Fuguzi. It doesn't exist. It's fairy dust. It ain't real. Okay. So what is real? 300 or 350 to 850, 900. What does that mean? That means that as you build credit, okay, now for instance, most people, okay, well, everybody starts at zero. That's that's bar none. And zero isn't necessarily a bad thing because it means you've done nothing wrong, but it also doesn't mean you have any material for a bank to go off of to help get you a loan, okay? It just means that you haven't screwed up yet. So you start at zero. You take on a piece of credit, okay? Let's say it's a credit card. You begin to pay on this credit card. You will enter the bureau somewhere in the land of 600, okay? So let's say that you get a $500 card from Capital One, okay, which is a good institution. If you're just getting started, Capital One, a little free plug for them, They've got a venture card, a platinum card, a a couple cards that are, they're they're geared towards people with lighter credit experience to help them get developed, okay? So this credit card you have, you you charge some money on it, you start making some payments, you're going to develop a score that enters in kind of that 600 range, okay? And as you continue to do better, as you continue to build your credit, you'll go 6, 650, 700, 750, so on and so forth, in increments of one point. It doesn't go by 50s, it doesn't go by 20s. You can have a 687 credit score, it's perfectly viable. Now, you're going to hear me say this many times. This is live, and I'm thirsty. Ruben's laughing because it's like my new catchphrase. But guys, we don't do any edits. We don't do any cuts here. This is all straight from the gut, straight to you live, okay? So you got three credit bureaus, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. What's the difference? Kind of the same thing as Ford, uh, Chevy, and Chrysler, okay? Just three companies doing similar things so you have some choices, all right? Some banks tend to go more towards one than the other. Um, For instance, mortgages, I've, in my experience, again, excuse me, this is experiential talk. I'm giving you my experience. Mortgages have relied more so on the Experian Credit Bureau, okay? Automobile lenders are Experian, generally the FICO Model 8, into the TransUnion, more likely, a little less likely to use Equifax, unless it's Ford Motor Credit. Um, 
Equifax a lot of times is used by information gatherers like landlords, um, insurance companies, uh, people who are potentially employing you, so on and so forth, okay? So you start in the mid sixes, okay, and you work your way up. Now let's say that you have your credit at zero, nothing, and then you go to the hospital. You don't have insurance. They gotta do an x-ray. They gotta snap your leg back in place. They gotta cast it. You don't have insurance. They give you a bill for $578. And you're like, I know the rules, man. You gotta, you gotta treat me, <laughs> even if I can't pay this bill. So you tell them to go kindly urinate in their headpiece. Have a nice day. I'm not paying it, okay? So that's not gonna do anything. They're not gonna garnish your wages. It's not, but you are gonna get a, a letter in the mail called a collection letter. And it's gonna be from first the hospital or the medical office. Eventually, if you don't pay it, it will get referred to what's called a collection agency, okay? The collection agency is essentially a company that says, hey, big company that has uh, frequent situations where people don't pay you, just give me all those manila folders with all those overdue bills in them. I'm gonna give them to my team. My team's gonna put the screws to those people and you tell me what the minimum you're willing to accept is, I'll get them to get that for you and you just pay us five, 10, 15, percent off the top of whatever I get you back. Big company says, I don't have time to F with this. I really don't have the resources or the employees to try chasing this money down. Something's better than nothing. Get me 50% of everything that I'm owed and I'll give you 10% of it. They end up with 40%. They end up with 10% for doing the lag work. That's collection. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you get a collection letter. All right. Doesn't mean anything to you until you go to apply for credit. And instead of having the zero that you plan on having because you've never had a credit card or a loan before, the person on the other side of the desk tells you, man, you're a 473, dude. You screwed the pooch here. And you're like, man, how? What? I, I don't have any credit, dog. How can I be a for anything? I'm a zero. No, sir, right here, it says, uh, Simon's Collection Agency out of Liverpool, New York, has got an active collection action against you for $100 emergency room visit, $300 x-ray, $195 prescription in-house for a total of $595. You, kind sir or madam, now have three negative pieces of credit on your credit bureau, and your credit score is in the shitter, okay? Is life over? No. It's very simple. Pay them. Get it over with. That's another bad piece of information that I found out there on the interwebs, okay, with all these YouTube aficionados giving all this information because they're looking for video views and monetizing their page, I couldn't tell you how many of these gurus said, yeah, don't, <laughs> here's the good news, pal. You don't need to pay off the whole collection. All you have to do is call the creditor, tell them, I don't have the money right now. I've only got 50 bucks and they'll settle for a lesser amount. Okay, that is accurate information. However, if you've got $595 worth of collections and you negotiate those balances down to a couple hundred bucks, that $400 that you have saved, <clears throat> excuse me, is now tattooed on your credit report as account settled for less than balance requested. I think I've got those words wrong. Account legally settled uh, for less than amount due. You get the point. You didn't fucking pay, okay? That's what it's telling you. Um, I don't know about you guys, but if I'm looking to lend somebody money and I look on their credit report and I see, okay, they don't have much. They've got a few small pieces. They got a $500 credit card that they've got, wow, $495 out on. Okay, that thing's maxed out. Um, they've got an Experian uh, national grid bill. Okay, no big deal. Oh, and then $500 they owed for medical bills and they only, they only paid a hundred bucks of it. Okay, it doesn't look favorably, all right? So, the information they gave was partially correct, but I believe that should have came with a big disclaimer that said, hey, listen, man, if you don't pay the whole goddamn thing for seven years, which is how long it takes an item to come off of your credit, you're going to be looked at on that piece of your credit as somebody who doesn't pay what they owe, okay? And it does affect your score. I don't care what anybody tells you, it does affect your score. It also affects underwriting decisions, okay? We'll get into that later. Ruben, remind me to talk about underwriting decisions, okay? I love having a producer, it makes me feel special. Okay, so you got the three major credit bureaus, right? You got 300 and something to 800 and something. When you enter the bureau, you enter around six unless you go negative, which brings you down below six. If you get started, you go six, climb slowly, seven, eight, whatever, so on and so forth. Let's talk about the things that actually affect your credit score, okay? They are as follows. Number one, and the most important piece, is on-time payment history. 
Accountability is this overarching theme in the man of the free that I preach to you that is going to help you become successful. It is going to help you with your relationships. It's going to help you with your children. It's going to help you in the workplace, uh, place, excuse me, professionally, whatever the case may be. If you do what you say you're going to do, your life will get better. If people know you as the person who, when he or she says they're going to do something, you can cash that check. You can set your watch to that. That's going to happen. I promise you, your prowess in society, your place on the totem pole will work its way up. That is a fact. I will test it any day of the week, and I will debate that fact with anybody. I am living proof that that is a fact. Okay, so it's just convenient that it just so happens to be the single most important and heaviest weighted factor when it comes to building your credit, okay? So on-time payment history, what's that mean? That means if you get a car loan and you agree to pay $250 a month for 60 months on the 15th of the month, that means when the 12th hits, you're mailing out your payment. When the 14th hits, you're walking into the credit union and you're paying the bill. When the 15th hits, you're checking your app and you're saying, okay, money received, bill paid, I'm on time or early, on time or early doesn't matter, okay? But be accountable to these agencies or these lending institutions that let you borrow money. They did you a favor. Yeah, they're making money off it, but by and large, they took a risk on you. Show them that you were worth the risk. It will pan out for you in the long run, okay? So what percentage, okay? Um, I believe it's 35 or 40%, okay? Uh, and if you guys absolutely need to know down to the degree, look it up, but look it up on those actual credit bureaus websites, the ones of the reporting agencies. Don't go to YouTube. Don't go to fucking Google, okay? <laughs> because some of the shit, Ruben's laughing. We were discussing beforehand some of the stuff I found out there. It's not pretty, guys. The beauty of the internet is everybody can create content. Everybody can get famous if they want to. The detriment of that same device is the fact that anybody can act like they know something. And unfortunately, people will believe it if they're naive and they don't have the ability to do their own research. So I... I implore you, do, fact check everything I say. If I'm wrong, hit me up in the comments, but I'm not going to be, okay? So what else? What else? What do we got here? Um, payment history, utilization, okay? So payment history is how accountable are you to the place that lets you borrow the money uh, and how well do you pay back that loan? Now, if you're late, okay, generally, most of the time, there are exceptions, but by and large, if you're not 30 days late, it's likely that it won't tattoo your credit score, okay? Now, I don't advise you to pay your bills on the 29th day every month. It's just not a good idea. But what I'm letting you know is if you're two days late on your Capital One card, all hope is not lost. First, first and foremost, most important thing, communicate with your lender. Let them know, hey, listen, uh, because of the holiday, my direct deposit hit a day late. I got you. It's just going to be two days late. They're going to be fine with it. Just like you, if that person that let you, uh, you let the, uh, borrow the money calls you up and they're like, listen, man, I know I've made every payment on time, but this weekend my money got a little fucked up. I'm so sorry. I can't pay you Friday. I'll pay you Monday. You're good, doc. No problem. You might charge them a late fee. You might say, that's cool, but I got to have 20 bucks on top of it if you're a real prick, which is the <laughs> also uh, in, in relation to the banks and the lending institutions. If they're charging you a late fee on day two, they're a real prick and they're out there. But mostly five days, seven days, sometimes 10, sometimes 20, depending on who you're borrowing the money from, they'll give you a little grace period to where you can be late. I don't recommend it. Don't use it as like the same way people use their overdraft and their checking to buy groceries every week, but it's there for you if need be, okay? So so accountability, payments on time. Next thing is utilization, okay? Number two, utilization. What does that mean? If I give you a credit card and I say, Ruben, here's a $5,000 credit card, okay? Are you going to take that credit card and you're going to go swipe it and buy 5,000 bucks worth of clothes? I, I'm not, but it sounds fun. <laughs> it does sound fun. Now, why wouldn't you do that? Well, because first of all, the, the money, the credit as a money is it, it's it's money on a card, but you if you don't have the money to pay it off, then you're, you're kind of in a problem. Bingo. Um, is there any other reasons or would that be your primary? That's a good reason. That would be my primary. Okay. So Ruben says, listen, it's 5,000 bucks, but it's still money. People get this disease where they get their credit card and they're like, holy shit, someone just gave me $5,000. 
I've been wanting that PlayStation 5, that Prada bag, those Gucci shoes, and I need brakes on my car. And yes, that are most people's priorities, unfortunately. So they go and they swipe the card and they buy those things. Here's the problem. Number one, $5,000 is relatively difficult to pay back if you're making 500, 600, 800, 1,000, even 2,000 a week, right? After taxes, what do you got if you're making two grand a week? You got 1,400 bucks, okay? Now, if you're blessed to make $2,000 a week, Fucking rock and roll, man. You're killing it. Watch this podcast. We'll get you to 250. But most people are not, okay? So the people that are bringing home 500, 800, 1,000 bucks, $5,000 is a lot of money. That's a month or two or three worth of income, okay? So Ruben's absolutely right. You go out and you blow money on that credit card. You got to pay it back. And here's what happens. People do that. They start making the minimum payment because these credit card companies, they're, they're geniuses. They'll say, here's 5,000 bucks. Have a ball. So you go do that. Your bill comes. You owe $4,987.14. Minimum payment, $100. Well, shit. I got my car fixed. I got my Prada bag. I got my Fendi shoes, whatever the hell else I just said. I'm straight. And all it's going to cost me this month is $100. Bucks. Dope. Well, next thing you know, by the time you get 27 of those $100 a month bills paid, it's two years and three months later. Yo ass needs breaks again. Now, all of a sudden, you look at your credit card statement, you're like, okay, that's no problem. I got this credit card. I used it for my breaks last time. I'm going to use it for my breaks this time. Let me just quick check my available balance. Zero. Zero available balance. Credit used. $5,768. I didn't even, I just, I spent 49 how the hell? And then you look at the statement. You see the interest how it's accrued and how all you've done every month is just pay the minimum payment. So the interest has actually usurped. That means get over more than overcome. Ruben will put it, can you put a definition of usurped up on the screen. Okay, ready? The beauty of production. I love being able to do that. That's why I love Ruben. Okay, so usurped. The balance has usurped the original amount spent, the original credit amount, because you got very lazy and you got this grandiose vision of having nice things and not having to pay for them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now your credit card balance is 5,700 bucks. And you realize now that unless you pay four or $500 a month, that thing's never going down. It's just going to continue to climb. And that's the trouble that people get into with credit cards, okay? So, Ruben made a good point. Don't go out and blow a bunch of money because you're gonna have to pay that money back. I say this, lenders look at your utilization, okay? The same reason that, uh, I'm gonna take a wild guess. Ruben, you got a good credit score? Pretty good. Yeah, yeah, pretty damn good, I thought so. Here's why, because Ruben's instincts were good. Well, if you give me five grand, I'm not gonna go out and blow it all because shit, I don't wanna owe five grand, okay? And that's the common sense that the credit bureau is based on, okay? So the banks and the bureaus, they look and they say, okay, well, if we gave you 5,000, how much of it did you use, okay? Their magic number is 30%, okay? So that's what, 1,500 bucks on $5,000, okay? So what they're essentially saying is, go ahead and use $1,500, use the card, we gave it to you. But if you go over 1,500, we're gonna start to look at you as fiscally irresponsible, okay? Fiscal meaning money. We're gonna look at you who's not financially astute, astute meaning smart or studious. They're learning a lot today, Ruben, and I'm remembering some. <laughs> so they're gonna look at you as something who's frivolous, right? They get it, they spend it, blah, who cares? But what they're looking for you to do is be responsible, okay? A credit bureau score is essentially a financial risk assessment. It's a number that says, listen, this person is accountable. They're able to be trusted when allowed to borrow funds or they're not. They either do well, they're pretty decent, or they screw the pooch. There's kind of only three playing fields. There's not other common ground there. You're either strong, you're okay and able to be lended to at mediocre amounts, or you're just, you're just not credit worthy, okay? So on-time payments is a big deal, okay? It's probably 35 or 40%. Utilization, that's probably 25 or 30%, okay? Now, mix of credit plays in, okay? What do I mean by that? If you're 40 years old and you got 17 credit cards, are you gonna have a good credit score? As long as the balances are below 30%, as long as you've had them for a while, as long as they're paid on time, yeah, you'll probably be a you know 720. 770, 750, you'll be strong. Are you gonna be an 850? No, why is that? Because you don't have a mortgage. You don't have any real estate credit. You don't have an auto loan. You don't have any installment debt, 
Okay, you don't have a student loan, which student loans are one of those things that are an installment loan, but you can do without. So if you don't have a student loan, don't be worried. But they wanna see you with credit cards or revolving debt. They wanna see you with car loans, RV loans, unsecured personal loans, um, snowmobile, ATV, motorcycle, snap-on toolbox, whatever. An installment loan, meaning you borrowed X amount of dollars, you have to pay back a monthly payment of a fixed dollar amount over an agreed upon period of time with interest until that loan's paid. That's called an installment loan, okay? Revolving installment real estate. That's what they wanna see you with, okay? There's various other trinkets and whatnot. There's other types of credit out there, but by and large, the big three, the same way there's Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion, there's real estate, there's revolving, and there's installment, okay? I can tell you this. I had a decent credit score. It was like high sixes, low 700s. Now, the reason my credit score never really climbs into the eights is because I use my credit, okay? One month, my, my utilization might be 60%. The next month, it might be zero. The next month, it might be 80. The next month, it might be 20. Why is that? I own businesses, okay? And those businesses, the car dealerships, they buy parts. And depending on when the billing cycle hits, we might have $50,000 worth of parts purchased and not paid for. And the very next day, the credit card is paid off in full, okay? So I'm in a position where when I go into a bank to borrow money, excuse me, I make sure that several months previous, I've gotten the balances whacked down and I've just paid cash for everything. Let that score kind of work its way up. Excuse me. Ooh, monster. Comes back and bites you a little bit. Um, and I make sure that my score steadily rises and gets to that mid to upper 700s where I can get to prime interest rates. Okay. Um, and we'll touch on that. If I don't remember, Ruben, remind me to touch on scores and the importance of them and, and you know, which score dictates what, okay? Um, so I make sure that my score rises to a point where I'll get a decent interest rate. I never get told no because my history of repaying is perfect and I keep it moving, okay? So the mix of the credit that you use is important. And why is that? Because the credit bureau and the lenders, they wanna see that you've got experience, right? That you're well-rounded, okay? The same way you wouldn't wanna to go to a doctor for an upper respiratory infection who's a podiatrist, and you wouldn't wanna to go to an upper respiratory or an ENT to have your toenail looked at, okay? They kinda of wanna see you as a, as, a, as a physician, a general practice person, somebody who can help a little bit with all, just kind of a jack of all trades and a master of none, okay? So we've got uh, payment history, very, very important, 35 to 40%. We have utilization, very important, about 30%. Then we have your mix of credit, which is about 15 or 20%. And if you're keeping track on the math, there's a, a portion left of percentage. I'm not sure what the hell it is because I haven't been paying attention. But the last piece and the last most important piece, I would say, is length of accounts on the bureau. How long have you been at the game of credit, okay? I'm a perfect example of how important for lack of a better word that that time frame figure or that chronology is in regards to your credit okay i'm fresh out of prison i got a 400 and something credit score i go i go through the the process of establishing credit i go to the credit union i give them some money to secure so they give me a credit card i keep my balance below 30 percent. i make on-time payments six months later i ask them for a small installment debt they give me a two thousand dollar personal loan i pay that back in 12 months my score is now in the upper sixes and so on and so forth i continue to go it wasn't until about year five or six after reestablishment till my credit score jumped from the high sixes into, or excuse me, the, the high sixes and low 700s. I mean, anywhere from 695 to 725, which will get you any credit you need essentially. And you'll get the good to real good interest rates. You just won't get the prime or the best interest rates, okay? I jumped for up into that prime zone once a certain time marker hit. Okay, once I'd been on the bureau and my accounts reached an average age of, I wanna say it was like five years, boom, everything jumped. Now, don't be discouraged. That doesn't mean that you can't get to a 750 credit score in less than five years. It absolutely does. I see kids who are 18 years old who have been on the bureau. Ruben's nodding like a freaking bobblehead on the dashboard of an old Vanagon because he knows exactly what I'm talking about. And it's frustrating as all hell. I'll be a guy that's paid off a million dollars in debt sitting with my 738 credit score. And then some kid walks in, he's got a GameStop card and he's an authorized user on his mom's American Express. And I get him approved for a car loan and he gets 3.9 percent because his credit score is an 802. So guys, can I sit here and look you directly in the eyes and say that the credit bureau is figured out to a T. I've got it. There's a recipe to it. It's, you know, on point and it's going to work every single time. No, much like everything else in this world, especially things that are algorithm based, they're constantly changing. Okay. 
the information that I'm giving you will get you to or above an 800 credit score, okay? To get from 800 to 850, you're gonna need a financial advisor, you're gonna need a specialist, you're gonna need somebody who's there, okay? I talk about things that I have experience in, okay? I'm not an 800 credit score, okay? I believe my credit score is a 757 or something like that, okay? I'm very proud of that. Now, there's those of you out there that are going, <laughs> well, I'm an 807. Man of the free, I've got him beat by 65 points. Full fucking God bless you, dude, okay? Are you paying uh, $1.7 million of credit every, every quarter of the year that goes through with your business? If you are, well, fuck you, okay? Good for you. If you're not, then quit hating. Bottom line is, there are, there's room for me to aspire to as well. But what I'm telling you is if you're above a 750, 740 really is kind of that top notch number. If you're above a 740 and your credit card balances are relatively low, you're not going to get denied for anything. Okay. As, as long as the terms are reasonable. Okay. If you go try to borrow $500,000 against a house that's worth a buck 50, you're going to get denied if you're an 849 credit score. But when it pertains to the, the scenario being realistic, <coughs> excuse me, or viable for the lender, if you're above an, a 740, you're going to get the loan. As long as there's nothing on your bureau that shows that you're about to shit the bed completely. Okay. So when I bring you information, I bring it to you from experience. Okay. I bring it to you in a way that I know it can be trusted because I've been through it myself. I've gone through it. I've seen it. I know it works and I'm bringing it to you. Okay. As it pertains to the fine details, critiquing it to the nth degree, getting absolutely perfect. Okay. I can do that with you when it comes to bodybuilding. You see me flex when I said that? Did you see that? Okay. <laughs> We keep it real here, guys. I'm a human being, okay? But anyways, you want to talk about bodybuilding, okay? I started, I got out of prison. I was 195 pounds, okay? I'm now 285 pounds and brolic, and I'm proud of it. And I know how to get there. I've done it, okay? Was that a good double bicep? Not bad. Thank you. Ruben's like my security blanket. Guys, I can teach you those things because I've been there, I've done it, and I've done it well, and I've done it to about as good as it can be done. Do I, do, am I saying that I'm the best looking out there? No, I'm saying that what my body, my physique, my genetics are capable of, I believe I've reached the, the maximum potential, okay? Um, and, and remember Antonio Diaz? He, he, he validated that. I had a pro bodybuilder tell me that I brought my physique to the, to the nth degree, and I'm proud of that, but I digress. When it comes to buying a used car or selling a used car, I can, I can give it to you bar none, the best it can come, guys, because that's what I do for a living and I'm one of the best at it, okay? When it comes to credit, I see it every day. I deal with it every day. I've got an excellent working knowledge of it and I can convey it to you in a constructive fashion and everything that I've given you today is 100% factual and real, okay? All I'm saying is if you need to know it to perfection, if you're an 825, and you're trying to get to an 850, I'm probably not the guy to teach you how to do that. And if you're an 825 trying to get to an 850, you got OCD, man, let it go, okay? Unless you got a bet going on with a buddy. In that case, win your money, okay? Ruben, there were two things I asked you to remind me of. What were they? Yeah, first uh, was uh, underwriting decisions. Okay, so when I, this is live and I'm thirsty. Uh, when I said underwriting, I just kind of spurred a thought I wanted to make sure you guys know what I mean when I say underwriting, because when I was an 18 year old car salesman, I didn't know what the hell that meant. Okay, what's that mean? When you go to a bank to borrow money, okay, let's say you walk into a credit union and a credit union, boy oh boy, is a way better place to go than a bank. And we're gonna do an episode on that, Ruben, I've just decided, okay? So you walk into a bank or a credit union, you sit down at a desk with a human being. This human being says, okay, what are you trying to do? Give me your credit application. What's your social date of birth? How much do you make? How long have you worked there? How long have you lived there? What's your rent? Blah, blah, blah. Sign at the bottom. They clickety click and they say, okay, you qualify for this, this, and this. Possibly we got to send it off to underwriting to get you a decision. What does that mean? It's pretty simple, guys. It means that in a room somewhere, probably in an office or a cubicle, there's somebody who sits there and just underwrites loans all day. What does that mean? They've got a list of criteria established by the lender that the uh, loan or the deal or the funding package, <clears throat> excuse me, must meet in order for them to be able to approve that loan. Now, the person that you talk to at the bank, they see you face to face. So, the banks over time have developed a policy of having underwriters, you know, not customer facing because historically, 
people like yours truly have been able to talk the the people, the, the, the customer facing bankers into doing things and approving things that probably were outside of the confines of what the bank or the bank president would have wanted them to do. So they want this guy or gal in an office closed off in the real world, listening to their Dr. Dre beats pill uh, country station with their policy and procedures manual and just looking just comparing and seeing if the loan makes sense. They're not seeing the person, okay? And you can look this up, guys, but there might be a part of it that has to do with the, the Fair Lending Act. There might be a part of it where the underwriter can't see you or something like that. I'm, and I don't know if that's factual, but it just dawned on me that that might be logical. What do you think, Ruben? Does that make sense? Yeah, I don't, I don't know the exact thing, but... I Probably some. Well, I know that you can't lend, you know, that you can't lend in a discriminatory fashion. You know, you can't give Mr. McGillicuddy a loan with an 800 credit score, but not give it to Mr. Rodriguez. Okay. You can't give uh, the black man a loan and not give it to the white guy. You can't give the woman a loan and not give it to the man. You can't discriminate based on race, religion, sex, um, income. There, you know, look it up. But my point being, that may play into the underwriting thing as well. I don't know. I'm not going to spend much time on it. But the point being that it goes to somebody else, okay? Um, and I see that a lot in lending where the person that you talk to acts like they're the one, oh, I got it approved for you. No, you fucking didn't. You faxed it over here. That guy stamped it and sent it back. So when the underwriter looks at it, what they're doing, when I said it goes off to underwriting, this person is looking at it and they're saying, okay, does this person look like somebody who we should lend money to? Which is simply, are we going to get this money back? Is this money going to come back to us with interest? Are they going to fulfill this obligation? Okay. And what they're looking at is they're looking at your credit bureau. Okay. They're looking at your credit application, which is a long form usually, or it's now done online a lot. And they're looking at where, 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 where do you work? How long have you been there? How much money do you make? How much money do you have? And I'll talk about that real quick. The factors that will help you get a loan, okay? They're gonna look at your debt to income. How much money do you have going out in bills versus how much money you have coming in? And I see people get into troubles with this. They'll find out they got a 727 credit score. They'll go to GameStop and get a card there. They'll go to Best Buy and get a card there. They'll go to Macy's and get a card there. They'll get one from Amazon. Wherever they go, that offers them a 0% or not. They're going to get a credit card. They just bury themselves in debt, okay? So if the underwriter is looking at your credit bureau and your credit app and they see, okay, Ruben makes $5,000 a month. I don't know how fucking much Ruben makes, okay? But let's say that's the number, 60 grand a year. Ruben makes $5,000 a month. He has... $1,500 going out in a mortgage, and then, ding, 3500 He has 750 going out in a loan for a camper. Ding, that brings it down to what, 2850 2750 yep. Okay, he's got $250 going out per month for his uh, ATV. Bing, brings it down to 2500 bucks. He's got $500 a month going out for his pickup truck. Bing, that brings it down to $2,000. Then he's got several credit cards with 50, 100, $150 minimum payments. <laughs> excuse me, brings them down to about $1,600 a month. Do you think that if you make $5,000 a month and you've got 40, or excuse me, $3,400 of it going out, do you think that underwriter is going to approve you for anything? The answer is no, guys. $1,600, bucks, 400 bucks a week, that's not, if you're a $60,000 a year earner, 400 bucks a week ain't going to do it. Because here's what they're taking into consideration. And some of you out there might have already thought of this. If you make $5,000 a month, $5,000 ain't what goes in your bank account. $1,000 goes to Uncle Sam. A couple hundred dollars goes to the state of New York. A couple hundred bucks goes to FICA, Medicare, Social Security, et cetera. You're going to end up with about 65 or 70% of what you actually make. And then from there, they say cost of living is going to be another probably 15 or 20%. So what you can count on, okay, rest assured, when an underwriter is looking at your loan, they're pretty much taking your income and they're cutting it in half, okay? They're taking half of your gross, half of your gross income, 5000 and they're putting it over here. And they're saying, okay, what's left? 2,500 bucks, which in their mind is really, they have, you know, after taxes, 3,600, okay. Cut it in half, we have 1,800 bucks. 1,800 bucks is what they should be allowed to send out in monthly payments to be considered financially responsible, okay, guys? And this isn't an exact science. Some banks are 60, some are 40, some are only 20. Depends on what product you're trying to buy, what lending product you're trying to get approved for, et cetera. But the 50% number is a good rule of thumb. Ask anybody in lending, okay? So now you got 1,600 bucks left. They're gonna look and see how much of that is going out. If you got 
Your rent is 600 bucks. You got a $200 car payment, $100 credit card payment. You, you got, you know, whatever, eight, 900 bucks left. You're, you're good to go, okay? But if the majority of that 1600 bucks has been used up, you're not getting approved, okay? And quite honestly, you shouldn't want to, okay? Now, there's, there's those of you folks out there who don't claim all your money, okay? Of course, we know nobody does that, right? Um, you're not paying taxes. All your money isn't above the books. And you know that you got a fruit stand and babysitting. The fruit stand brings you in 500 bucks a month. Babysitting brings you in 500 bucks a month. And you work a full-time job that brings you in 2,500 bucks a month. So, <coughs> excuse me, you've really got 3,500. So they should really be basing everything off 1750, but they're not, they're only uh, basing it off 1250. Okay. That's the nature of the beast. Okay. Now I made a comment earlier about banks versus credit unions. Okay. You can rest assured that what I present as income, which is my real taxable income, versus what is going out on my credit bureau is grossly flip-flopped. Why is that? Because the majority of the business's credit has me as a guarantor. So that means that this $10 million a year corporation that has all this money going in and out on a daily basis is also showing on my credit bureau. So I probably show, you know, 50 grand a month going out, okay? And I, I don't claim 50 grand a month coming in, although I will soon, hopefully, if everything goes in the right trajectory. Um, but it's just not realistic, guys. It's, it's So my point being, there are exceptions to that. And the reason I recommend the credit union, if I go into my credit union and I'm a member of three or four, when I go in there and I say, hey, I need this, they go, okay, when do you need it by? I'd like to pick it up tomorrow. No problem. We'll have the check cut in the morning. Okay. Now that's not a flex. That's just reality. Okay. But I've also paid them hundreds of thousands of dollars in interest over the years. Okay. I've also did exactly what I said I was going to do. I've also let loans mature. Okay. And pay them over the agreed upon term instead of paying them off early. So that bank could make its interest. So I could establish that relationship because I knew eventually that I may not, may have to lean on that relationship. Okay. And that's another thing. Okay, in those YouTube videos and that bullshit that I found out there on the internet, okay, the guy, one of these guys goes, yeah, and, uh, you know, the credit bureau, uh, length of time on the bureau, length of accounts, you know, the longer you have an account open, the longer an account stays open, the better your credit score gets. <laughs> it's obviously designed to keep you in debt forever. No, no, it's not, okay? Quite the opposite. This is live on Thursday. Quite the opposite, guys. <clears throat> As you can tell, my voice is getting a little raspy. It's a topic I'm enthusiastic about, guys. Credit can help you. Credit will change your life, okay? But no, it's not designed to keep you in debt forever. The credit score is designed to see how reliable you are. How likely is it that you're going to fulfill the obligation that you made, okay? Now, I'd like you to consider something. That same friend that we talked about in the beginning of the show comes to you and asks you to borrow $1,000, says they'll pay you back $1,500 in two months. They come back three days later. They hand you the 1000 bucks. You're all set, dude. You're good. You're like, okay, what about $1,500? Well, yeah, that was if it took me two months. Well, yeah, man, but like I, I let you borrow $1,000. I should be getting something for it. No, man. You're, you're in New York state. This is my state. Okay. Other states are different. A lot of states are this way. Now there's a lot of legislation that's gone this way. You're in New York state. If I pay it off early, there's no penalty. I don't have to pay all that interest. You're like, right, dude. But like the whole premise of this thing was I was going to make 500 bucks by letting you borrow this money. Dude, I didn't take my girl to monster jam yesterday. Am I showing my true colors as a redneck? <laughs> Because everybody's girl wants to go see monster mutt jump the goddamn broken trucks. Anyways, I digress. The whole premise of this thing was I was going to make $500, okay? Last night, me and my girl didn't go to Monster Jam, okay? And it was because I didn't have the 1000 bucks in the bank to provide that cushion that I'm used to having so I can go out and do the things I like to do. Man, you told me if I borrowed this, or if I let you borrow this 1000 bucks, you was going to pay me 1500 man. I'd like my money. Nah, dude, sorry. Nothing you can do about it. Here's your 1000 bucks. Thanks for your help. Have a nice day. I'm done with you. Now, imagine you're a bank, and it was $100,000, and you agreed to let them have it for 30 years under the pretense that you would get paid back $150,000, okay? That person borrows the money. You go through the whole closing process. You send out your employees that do inspections and underwriting, and your team's tied up for days to close on this home for this guy, and it costs you 
$3,500 in expenses and resources and gas and power to get this whole thing done, okay? The guy borrows the money, you're all set, you close. Eight months later, bang, a check comes in for $102,748. Paid off, over with, done. All that, that you, so now you're at a net loss. It costs you 3,500 bucks to close on it. You let them borrow 100, you got back 1027. You lost, what is that, 700 bucks, 800 bucks? You lost 800 bucks, okay? So that's why if you pay on your accounts over a period of time, when you stick to the obligation that you originally signed up for, the longer time on the bureau gets you a better credit score because it shows that you meet the obligation that you originally agreed to, okay? Furthermore, for those geniuses who made those videos, length on the bureau can be credit cards. You don't have to carry a balance on a credit card. Okay, my oldest piece of history on my bureau is a Capital One credit card. It's been on there for like 10 years. Guess what? There's no fucking balance on it. So no, it's not keeping me in debt forever. God, those people pissed me off. <laughs> Can you tell, Ruben, the fucking internet geniuses, all the people out there selling you the information that the general public is receiving and taking as gospel and walking directly from the frying pan into the fire. They're like, that. you ever see the Pink Floyd music video, The Wall? Okay, like the kids walking into the meat grinder. Fucking ridiculous, okay? <laughs> Guys, I'm just having fun with this. But the bottom line is, the credit bureau is designed in a way that is frustrating. There is no question about that, okay? For instance, you give me a $5,000 credit card, let me use it, bro. Let me use it, I'll pay it off. Don't, not, perfect, perfect personal example to help you uh, uh, align the fact that I'm speaking on experience, okay? Several years ago, we got a new house, went out to Best Buy, Lowe's, Home Depot, da 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 racked up all these credit cards. Because every time I went to buy something, they went, oh, Mr. Lunkenheimer, we see here that you qualify automatically for our 0% credit card. I'm like, cool, what's the balance? $1,700. Okay, sign me up for a $1,700 Home Depot card and charge it. Sure, I'll take two years at zero interest to pay for it. Every book on finances, including the Man of the Free podcast, told me, use somebody else's money if you can. I'll do that. Hell yeah, it's the smart thing to do. And it is unless you're gonna leave it on there and you discover that your credit score the next month is now 551 from 747 because you took out seven credit cards. And instead of saying, yeah, let me get a $5,000 card and charge the 1,700 bucks, just open one for 1,800, charge the 1,777. Next thing I know, next month, I have 100% revolving credit usage and my score drops from heaven to hell. Very real personal experience, okay? so. It's frustrating, right? It's 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 credit, you wanna use it, and you're young, okay, right? A lot of you guys out there, you're young. You're like, listen, man, I'm a good kid. I got high honor roll, I'm a student athlete. I did what I was supposed to do. Or maybe you're none of those things. Maybe you got your GED, you're just a good person, and you're gonna pay it back. And man, you just really want that shiny new Kawasaki Ninja, okay? Or, God, dude, I just really want that new uh, Gibson Les Paul guitar at Guitar Center. I want that Synchrony Bank 0% credit card. I, I'll pay it back, I promise, okay? You're gonna need a cosigner. Okay, because the bank's just not gonna look at you. Here's another reason the credit union's good, by the way, okay? Let's say you want that guitar. You go into a guitar center, okay? And you sign up for that Synchrony credit card. Now, let's say you paid all your bills on time, you've done everything that you were supposed to do, but you've got two student loans that are in deferment, so your credit score's only a 633. You ain't getting approved, okay? Now, I don't know Synchrony's score cut off, but I'm gonna guess it's well above 633. So if I'm wrong there, guys, call me on it. But I'm giving a general idea here, okay? So let's say their minimum score cut off is 680. You're a 633. You're absolutely gonna pay that money back without question, okay? And you've proven that you can do it and everything on your credit says you're going to. But guess what? When they clickety-click, punch it in the little nine-digit number pad and the thing spits out the thing that says declined, you ain't getting your Gibson Les Paul, okay? It's not happening. However... If you walked into the credit union, okay, same thing, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, all those guys, you're 633, they're going to tell you to go take a shit. You walk into your local credit union, you say, hey, listen, I know my score's a little low, but I want this guitar. They look at your credit. Yeah, you're a 633, but you've paid us back everything you've ever borrowed. You got a couple student loans that are in deferment, but oh, those are going to get paid. Yeah, we can see you got the money to pay for it. Yeah, you're good. Interest rate's going to be 13% because your score's low, but we'll give you the money. Listen, man, if you want the guitar, if you need the guitar, 13% means nothing to you because on a couple grants, a couple hundred bucks, and you'll probably pay it off early. But that's why the credit bureau can be frustrating, okay? Because you can be perfectly capable of repaying a debt, 
But the way the algorithms are set up with a lot of these companies, you're gonna get shut down if your credit score is not high, okay? So guys, Ruben, what was number two? Number two is scores and the importance of them. Okay, exactly, guys. So scores, you know, you enter around six, you go backwards anywhere from, you know, 599 down to three something, you can go up to 850. What are the real lines in the sand, okay? 600, okay? That's your first real line in the sand because if you're five anything, that means there's something derogatory on your bureau. If you're six something, there still could be something derogatory on your bureau, but there's also something positive which brings your score north of 600, okay? Once you get over 640, you're gonna start to get approved for stuff, okay? It's gonna be the basics. It's gonna be your entry-level credit cards. It's gonna be a you know a high interest account at Rena Center. It's gonna be an automobile, but it's gonna be at 17.99%, okay? Here's another thing too, I'd like to debunk a myth. Your credit score doesn't, it's not all of it, okay? If you go into the credit union and you're a 648 credit score, doesn't mean you're getting a car loan. If you're a 648 credit score, because you got one Capital One card with a $500 limit that you've charged 300 bucks on and paid it for four months, they're not going to give you a car. I mean, some credit unions might, okay? The chances are not likely, okay? You really have to hunt for a credit union that's very generous. And they're out there, guys. They're, they're out there. I'm telling you right now, if you got a 640 credit score, one credit card, and you need a used car, come see CNY Drives because we got a credit union that will get that done. But I'm speaking to you, <laughs> little plug, I'm speaking to you in terms of generalities and the highest likelihood, okay? What they're going to want to see is experience. They're going to want to see an installment loan paid off, a car loan paid off. And there, there goes that giant question that young people always have. How am I supposed to prove I can pay off a car loan if I've never been given a car loan, okay? You get enough credit built up, you get a $2,000 credit card that you've been paying well on for seven months, a year, year and a half, you get a personal loan for 5,000 bucks that you pay off, you have it over the course of a year, year and a half, you're gonna get your car, okay? You don't need a cosigner. Cosigner gets you there quicker. Now, I wanna debunk one more thing that I saw on these lovely YouTube videos and all this social media bullshit that I saw that was just diarrhea out of the butthole that is the internet, okay? And that was, well, if you wanna raise your credit score super quick, just sign yourself up as an authorized user on your mom, dad, aunt, uncle, sister, whomever's credit card. Doesn't cost them anything. It's not like you can go spend their money or anything. There's no obligation whatsoever. It's just an instant way to boost your credit overnight. Bullshit. Let's dissect the term authorized user. Ruben, could you take a wild guess at what that means? I, I mean, <laughs> it I, must be funny because Ruben can't talk. I mean, authorization, I mean, most people would think that. Ruben, this is live. Are you thirsty? I'm thirsty. Okay. Well, Always you got thirsty. water. <laughs> I got some water. Uh, authorization, I mean... You, Usually the, the definition of it is that you're authorized to do something. Given the authority yeah. too. User, what would you do with a credit card? Well, usually if you have a credit card. Pick your you teeth know, with it? Yeah. You know, maybe some other things too. Spend some fucking money, right? Authorized user means you are authorized to use the card. So whoever the brainiac was that I watched last night, that said, well, it's not like it even affects them at all. There's no obligation, really. There's no real danger. It's not like you would even spend the money. Fucking go do a goddamn YouTube video on something else, please. Pokemon cards, My Little Ponies, Bottle Rockets, Model RC cars, whatever it is that you're into, and I'm just giving those out there, judging by your haircut and your glasses, shouldn't be firing shots. I'm, I'm being so okay. mean right now. It's real though, man. Like, fuck, guys. Stay here, okay? I'd love you to, you know, hit the thumbs up thing. I'd love you to, you know, hop on our subscription list or the, the, the button there because... I'm going to bring you value, okay? And I, I would be honored if you would join me on this journey to bring truth, okay? Political truth, financial truth, emotional truth, relationship truth. Guys, stick around. Watch some of our videos. There's going to be buttons or like videos. On, I don't know. I'm not very, I'm, I'm new at this. But I promise you, anything that you click on where you see me speaking or speaking with somebody else, there's going to be value there because I don't come on this goddamn microphone and Ruben doesn't come in this studio unless I have something where I feel I can bring something to my fellow man, Okay. I call myself the man of the free, not because I think it sounds cool, although it really fucking does. I call myself the man of the free because I believe I'm a guy that brings value and content to people for free that allows them to be free, okay? Doesn't cost you anything, improves the quality of your life, okay? So hang out, okay? Become a, a member of our subscription list. 
and just watch these videos, okay? If you see a title that doesn't look like it pertains to you whatsoever, skip it. You know, I'm not, my feelings aren't hurt. I don't make money off this. We're not here to try to drive you into our funnel and sell you t-shirts. Although t-shirts would be cool. T-shirts would be cool. I have, I have a good catchphrase for one of them. Yeah? yeah. What? I'm thirsty and this I'm is live? <laughs> <laughs> Freedom of mind, money, and media. Guys, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming on here today and listening to me rant and joke. And as you can see by the context and the demeanor of the show, this isn't fucking CNN. This isn't Fox News, okay? This isn't the Ben Shapiro show. This is the man of the free, Luke Lunkenheimer. Luke Lunk, because Lunkenheimer is a long fucking word. And all I'm trying to do is take my experience and the shit that I've been through and help you. Help you not go where I went. Help you not go through what I went through. More importantly, this later part of my life, where I'm really kicking ass, I'm trying to help you get there quicker, okay? And unlike my competition, who wants to keep you stupid, the people that want to keep you in the dark, they don't want to give you the secrets. They don't want to tell you that it's actually easy. They don't want to tell you that you can do the things that the people at the top of the fucking food chain can do, because guess what? Now they've got a competitor, okay? But if you're like me, and you're confident that you're really fucking good at what you do, okay, number one, and that the chances of somebody competing with you are slim to none and slim just left town. Boy, that's cliche, but I love it. You got the confidence and you don't have to worry about somebody else having the cheat code, okay? Because unless they're putting in the work I'm working in, they're not gonna surpass me. But I'm gonna give you one better. Do it. Do better. <laughs> it don't hurt me any, man. The pie is so goddamn big in this country. I could literally go into the marketplace and hack out a billion dollars and throw it in a trash compactor, a burn pile, a paper shredder. The marketplace would be none the wiser. When I say the marketplace, what do I mean? I mean the market, the global market, the national market, okay? There's so many trillions of dollars just, I mean, look at our most recent government spending. Some one point something trillion dollars. You think a billion bucks is gonna make a blip on the radar? The point I'm making, guys, is there is so much to go around. I, I, I'd love you to surpass me, okay? Then I'll watch your YouTube channel and I'll learn from you because it will only help me get better, okay? Humility is a trait of great people, guys, okay? And I feel like I see a lot of this out there in the internet space. I see bullshit. Just people acting like they're educating but really not bringing anything of value. They're just driving that same mainstream narrative down your throat. They're just calling it something a little different. Perfect example, when I hopped on YouTube last night and I truly was trying to learn something. I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta make sure I cover all the bases. I gotta, I gotta bring the truth to my audience. I gotta be authentic and I gotta give them good information because I wanna help them and I wanna make sure that I'm accountable for the information I bring forward. So let me watch, my workout was two hours long. I watched, I don't know how many videos, read, I don't know how many articles. And I was like, God dang, I've been at this for two hours and I'm just listening to the same thing over and over again, okay? Guys, share this video, please, please. If you know anybody that needs information on credit, wants to get better, wants to be able to buy something, somebody whose credit is in the shit at a zero or good and wants to get better, share this with them, okay? Because it's good information. It's great content. You can literally take what you learned in this video and climb your way to an excellent credit score very quickly, okay? Excellent credit score being 740 and above, okay? You break that 740 mark, you ain't getting told no for nothing. You're 640 to 740, you're getting approved, you just might pay a little higher interest rate. You're 640 and below, you need some work, you're under six, you're in the shit house. okay? You gotta do something about that, okay? Get your collections paid off, Okay, if you don't have the money, if you're flat broke, paying a portion of the collection and getting it settled, yes, it is better than not paying it at all, okay? But guys, I'm gonna tell you what, for a couple hundred bucks, in the long run, in the long game, because if you're starting to work on your credit right now, high percentage chance, six, seven years from now, you're gonna be doing much bigger things, okay? Pay that extra hundred bucks. Pay the people what you owed them for two reasons. One. You can't ever say that you didn't, that you stiffed, you can't ever say that you stiffed somebody. They won't be able to say that you got them. You'll be able to put your head on the pillow and say, no, it took me a while. Okay, I didn't do the right thing at first, but I righted my wrong. I did what I said I was gonna do. Accountability, okay? Get your collections paid off. Get your credit card balances paid down. Get yourself a diverse array of credit. And guys, 
get you a credit union. Get the fuck away from the major banks. I will do an episode and I will show you that it costs you money to have your money in a bank account. There's no more compound interest. There's no more yields of savings accounts. Those days are over. Wall Street is filthy fucking rich off the backs of working Americans. Credit unions were created for working Americans and they still help working Americans. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for trusting me to bring you good information. Thank you for continuing, <clears throat> excuse me, to come back here and let me bring this information to you. Thank you for trusting me. Thank you for giving me a shot. Thank you for not having to go see a celebrity. Thank you for coming to just an average fucking Joe and letting him educate you on the things that he has experienced in life. And I'm going to continue to get better. I promise you, these shows are going to continue to become more valuable. The guests that we bring in this studio are going to become increasingly more valuable and have more prowess in the community. Guys, we're going nowhere but up. I'm going to take you with me and I'm going to show you how to become successful and get to the top of the fucking ladder because that's where I'm going and I'm going to bring you with me and I'm going to show you how I got there. Okay. So stay with me, stay focused, stay motivated, but most of all, stay free.